Hi everybody, it's Danielle from Haverford Township Free Library and welcome to this week's Pajama Story Time. If you haven't been inside the library yet to sign up for our summer reading program, I want to tell you a little bit about one of the programs that we're having. As you come up the stairs to the children's room, you're going to see an animal display. And it's a poster board on the wall and a bunch of books featuring that animal. That is part of our wildlife bingo. And this is the bingo card right here. What you do is you get a bingo card from the children's, rooms, children's room desk and you check out the animal that's on the poster board. Mark off that animal on your bingo card and then come back each week to see what the new animal is and learn a little bit about that animal too if you would like. There's facts and books and a QR code to a video. Mark off each animal and when you get five in a row, you have bingo. Fill out the bottom of the board and bring it back to us and we'll enter you into a raffle prize. This week, our animal for our featured wildlife bingo is the octopus. So I thought I would read an octopus book for story time. I am reading Izzy and Oscar, and this is by Allison Estes and Dan Stark. Izzy and Oscar. Oh, let's take a look here. There's the beach, and it looks like there's an octopus coming up onto the land. Call me Izzy. It's only Isabel if I'm in trouble, and the captain is never in trouble. Well, almost never. Everybody in the crew already had a pet, except me. A real pirate captain has to have a mascot, Flynn said. A real pirate should also know how to swim, but if you can't, Feed her to the fish! Mutiny! Just stay out of the water. A clever captain never walks the plank. Avast me hearties! Let's hunt for treasure! Aye aye, captain, Sam said. Right where X marks the spot, there was Oscar. I guess he just splooshed out of the ocean and slithered into town. There's your mascot, Flynn said. I really wanted a pet monkey, but little octopuses are pretty cute. He'll do, I said. Load him in, in the jolly boat and set sail for home. Izzy, when I said maybe you could get a pet, I meant a traditional pet, Mom said. Tradition smuggishin, I said. I will teach him to be a good pet. Look at him. There he is in the toilet. Oh my goodness. At first, I didn't know what to feed him. Looks like she's trying to feed him some grass there. And then here she's trying to feed him some dog food. But it didn't take too long to figure it out. There she is now feeding him cans of sardines. Pew! After a while, he would spit out the can. The crew had lots of helpful suggestions. My cat is soft and snuggly to sleep with, Flynn said. I tried cuddling up with Oscar, but it was hard to sleep squeezed underneath my bunk. My bird can perch on my shoulder and say, shiver me timbers, Tia said. Oscar could perch on my shoulder, sort of. My dog can play frisbee, Sam said. I tried teaching Oscar some tricks. Sit, shake, scuttle me skippers. Oscar wouldn't fetch a ball or the paper. He brought back other things. Let's see, what did he bring back? He brought back uh, a crab, uh, a paddle, an old boot some sunglasses. I guess basically things that he found in the ocean, right? Hmm. But he did have one really good trick. Camouflage. Can you find him? There he is. 
Oscar could blend in with anything and totally disappear. I wish I could hide like that, especially when my mom says someone needs to take out the garbage. Of course, I had to walk him. He was pretty good on a leash. Uh, mostly. Oscar ate a lot. He grew bigger. So did his octopoop. Hey, maybe you can ride him, Sam said. I took him to the stable and saddled him up. Giddy up, Oscar. Hmm, doesn't look like he's got very much giddy. Trying to teach Oscar to be a pet was a lot harder than I expected, and it was really cutting into my treasure hunting time. Come on, Oscar, an octopus belongs in the ocean, not with people. Oscar went camo. Guess he didn't like that. I hunted high and low, but couldn't find that scurvy octopus anywhere. He'll turn up when he gets hungry, Mom said. Can you find him camouflaged in this top picture? Can you see him on the table, blending in with the tablecloth? And then, oh, Mom found him. He turned up even sooner. What did he do? Mom must have scared him, and he squirted ink all over her. Ew! Isabel! A traditional pet does not squoosh out blank ink all over everything and your mother. Abandon ship, I ordered. Oscar spoodled out the door. I ran after him, but as I passed the city pool, help, man overboard. Uh-oh, I scrambled over to help, but before you could say Jack Sparrow, splash, double uh-oh. Help, Flynn hollered. Help, I burbled. Remember, Izzy doesn't know how to swim either, so now she's falling into the pool. Suddenly, I felt something wrap around my waist and jet me to the surface. My cat can't do that, Flynn said. The pool manager came running. Mom, too. Everyone okay? Ship shape, I said. Thanks to Oscar. Then I spied Oscar squiggling away. Ahoy, Oscar, don't go. And that's how the city pool got the best lifeguard ever. And that's how I finally learned to swim. There is one more thing I learned octopuses are really good at. Octo hugs. That's the end. If you check out this book, you can read a whole bunch of Octo facts. I'll give you one. When you want to talk about more than one octopus, you can say octopuses, octopi, or octopods. Interesting, the more you know. <laughs> that was Izzy and Oscar by Allison Estes and Dan Stark. So, since we read a fishy book, I thought I would do a fishy song. It's called Slippery Fish. And we have all sorts of different moves for that. We're gonna start with this one here. This is our slippery fish. A slippery fish, a slippery fish, sliding through the water. A slippery fish, a slippery fish, gulp, gulp. Gulp. Oh no! It's been eaten by an octopus, an octopus, squiggling through the water. An octopus, an octopus, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no! It's been eaten by a tuna fish, a tuna fish, flashing through the water. A tuna fish, a tuna fish, gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no! That's been eaten by, what do you think is even bigger than a tuna? A great white shark, a great white shark, lurking in the water. A great white shark, 
a great white shark. Gulp, gulp, gulp. Oh no! That's been eaten by, what do you think? What's even bigger than a great white shark? A humongous whale, humongous whale, spouting in the water. Humongous whale, humongous whale, gulp, gulp, gulp. Excuse me. <laughs> that was slippery fish. But that's not the end of our pajama story time, of course not. We have to do our silly lullaby. We can't end pajama story time without our silly lullaby from Sandra Boynton. So I have my bear friend here. You grab your stuffy or your sibling or your grown up or your pillow or your blanket or your pet or just give yourself a big squeeze and get ready for some silliness. Ready? Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitsy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, it's time to say a chew. The chicken's in the bathtub, the closet full of sheep. The sneakers in the freezer are drifting off to sleep. Go to sleep, my zoodle, my fibbledy fitsy foo. Go to sleep, sweet noodle, the owl is whispering, And with that, we say good night. And thank you so much for joining me for Pajama Storytime. Don't forget to stop into the library to sign up for summer reading and get your wildlife bingo card. Bye for now.